Now, as delegates at Davos mull over a shared future in a fractured world, let's delve further into expectations for this summit, especially for Africa. We are joined by Elsie Kanza, who is the head of regional strategies uh, for Africa for the World Economic Forum. Welcome to the show, uh, Elsie. Now, the theme this year, as we mentioned, creating a shared future in a fractured world, it certainly is quite fitting in terms of the global economic and political landscape right now. So what exactly is dominating conversation about Africa this year? Uh, well, it's been a, a fantastic showing, uh, first of all, uh, by the African, by Africans, both from government and business. Uh, we had over 30 senior government officials, of which nine were heads of state and government, um, with full Pan-African representation. We had the Deputy President of South Africa, President of Angola, President of Zimbabwe, President of Rwanda, Prime Minister of Somalia, Prime Minister of Ethiopia, Vice President of Nigeria, Prime Minister of Cote d'Ivoire, and the President of Guinea-Conakry. So very clearly you can see it's a, it's a combination of leaders who are very much committed to a new Africa, and this came through very strongly throughout uh, this week. Uh, many of them have departed for the forthcoming African Union meeting uh, that's taking place in Addis Ababa. And it was very clear that they were open to engaging with the, with the international community to help advance their national objectives for growth and development. But through the African program uh, in Davos, they're very much engaged also in how we can take, uh, we have stronger ownership um, of the African agenda, looking at issues such as strengthening uh, peace building uh, without, without stability it is not possible to invest and so it was also an opening up to have discussions with the business community. I'd like to note that uh, we had 30 top CEOs present of whom 13 were women which is great, it's, a, it's an unprecedented level of female representation but with, uh, with the two communities engaging with global stakeholders to say how can we address the protracted conflicts that are happening, not so much from a military point of view, but really looking at preventative diplomacy as well as restoring economic resilience. They also looked at issues such as sustainable development goals. The world will not achieve the sustainable development goals if African countries do not achieve the sustainable development goals. And we had various initiatives um, that were discussed in terms of how to take them forward. We have an initiative looking at infrastructure financing. Infrastructure remains fundamental. We had uh, discussions around how to accelerate energy access. Um, we're also very much committed to ensuring that Africa is not left behind with respect to the fourth industrial revolution. And there were discussions um, that took forward the initiative that's ongoing in Africa, Internet for All. So this is just a few uh, glimpses at what happened, but it was a very rich program. Mm. Now, a lot going on on uh, the global front when we talk about the global economy. What are your thoughts on the view that African leaders would have to struggle to be part of the agenda this year uh, as compared to other years? Actually, that's, uh, the, the converse has been true. Um, I've had people say to me, for example, that um, South Africa, they, they saw more of South Africa than they did of India. For example, I, I cannot corroborate that, uh, but that was, that was feedback from participants. They, very, uh, they felt very much that there was a sense of a new dawn in Africa. Um, the presence by the heads of state and government was very much welcome. This is an unprecedented level. Um, and also the, you know, the, the outlook. Uh, African countries are bouncing back. For example, Nigeria and uh, South Africa is now recommitting to strong reforms that will help it to get back on its feet uh, sooner rather than later and other economies like Rwanda growing, Cote d'Ivoire, very impressive progress and so I wouldn't say that there was a there was a subdued uh, element to the Africa agenda uh, in Davos. Mm. Now of course uh, generally when we look at the global economy we can't deny that there was a, there is a sense of anxiety about the future in the discussions that are taking place uh, this week. What has been the overall tone since the start of that forum? It has been surprisingly more positive than I expected quite frankly. Um, in the context of Africa and looking at the theme of the meeting creating a shared future 
uh, in a fractured world. In terms of fracturedness uh, in the African context, there were three key uh, priorities. One, conflict, two, climate change, and three, corruption. And we had discussions related to that, where it was very much about solutions oriented, very much a commitment to uh, prioritizing action that needs to be taken in these areas. You may be aware that many refugees and even conflicts are really uh, being driven by climate change uh, that's happening. So we need to restore and build um, resilience. With respect to creating a shared future, uh, discussions were very much centered around institutions. We need to strengthen institutions. Last year, we saw some institutions being called to question. Uh, without strong institutions, it's very difficult to have the right governance to take issues forward. Uh, we had discussions related to integration. This is not just for Africa. Um, across the world, everyone's concerned about the future of the WTO. But more importantly, in the African context, um, the first round of negotiations for the continental free trade area are going to uh, come to fruition in, in March. Um, at the African Union, heads of state are going to have an extraordinary meeting uh, to sign off on that first round. So there's a lot of excitement around what this means, uh, what it means in the African context, but what it means also for the global context. Remember, we have a lot of global players and investors uh, vested in Africa. Right. Uh, the third aspect is innovation, and something quite striking here is that Rwanda is the first country that joined the Center for the Fourth Industrial Revolution. And here they actually announced that they've now passed legislation um, that opens up the airspace to drones. Mm. Well, many thanks for that update, Elsie. Of course, that's Elsie Kanza. She is the head of regional strategies for Africa at the World Economic Forum.